Have you checked the Hey everyone, welcome back to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And I'm Ian Fuego, here. And we are here to do a review of the brand new M. Night Shyamalan movie titled Knock at the Cabin. Titled Knock at the Cabin. I almost got it that Indeed. time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we are going to be doing this review like we do all of them. Talk about our overall thoughts and the story, the acting, the effects, the filmmaking itself, all of that good stuff in turn. And uh, I would like to get your opinion on this one ah, first, Fuego, before I talk about my side. Well, I did message you with like just a brief like statement or two when I was walking out of the theater. The other yeah, night. you didn't miss much. Is yeah. what, is what I got, and I was like, uh oh, I'm yeah, in trouble. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing. Upon further rumination, I have found more to like about this one. Um, I talk about burden of expectation a lot, and I think that with this being his first R-rated movie since the happening, I thought that. The level of carnage was going to be a little bit higher and without spoiling too much there it's it's there but i felt like the cameras were like just cutting away for some of it and it just it it was brutal in the the subjective aspect of it and how it was going down and why like really why it's going down too why why those who because there's a whole element of sacrifice you know uh, that's throughout this entire movie's thread of, of narrative so it it's got some really great performances, most notably from Batista and from uh, the little girl who plays Gwen. I thought they were both great. Really, that, all of the cast was fairly solid, um, but it, it didn't bring the R-rated craziness quite as much as I thought it would. And there's no reason it, this should have been R-rated, in my opinion. There's a couple f bombs I think, like half <clears throat> oh of my God. and that's about it, dude. So I think that's him putting a stranglehold on himself, and we know that there were a lot of edits for this movie, and like there were test screenings, like two or three months ago that I got some of those email invites to and some people that I have spoken to who are at those and then who have seen it now say that the film was majorly retooled. I know M. Night Shyamalan rewrote the original script that he acquired in like 2018 because uh, it was on the blacklist and there was a lot of buzz about it. So I'm, I'm curious how much this might not have popped with test audiences initially and then they go through some, some re-editing and stuff. But yeah, I don't think it needed to be R-rated. It would probably make more money if it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but there is... A, it still is brutal subject matter despite the simplicity and i did quite like pretty much all the performances in it most notably patista and and the little girl so i definitely didn't love it uh i was expecting something maybe a little crazier but um i don't know lots of interesting philosophical issues about you know willingness to sacrifice for you know the needs of the many outweighing the needs of the few and all that so i thought that it was an interesting try um, I don't think it connected on a lot of the levels that maybe M. Night was hoping it would connect on. Like, I do agree it did bring up some interesting philosophical questions. However, I don't feel like any of those were given room to breathe and had time to be ruminated on by the characters really to any, any you know, meaningful extent. Um, it all kind of just cruises. The movie's an hour and a half, right? It's, it's very mm -hmm. short. And um, so it doesn't overstay its welcome, but at the sacrifice of giving me time to really think about what's going on, like, like everything's happening, but, but to me it was less, let's really focus on the weight of what's happening, and it's more of just like, let's get to the next thing, let's get to the next thing. And, it, and like, while normally I appreciate that sort of thing, I feel like this film could have benefited from a little bit extra time like really dissecting what's going on because it's really heavy shit going on really oh, heavy yeah. shit big time but uh but yeah it just doesn't it doesn't really connect on the level that i was hoping that it would the acting performances are all tremendous i really liked all of them but it felt like even they were a bit hamstrung by a script and uh and so ultimately you know I don't think anyone needs to rush out to the theater to see this. I think it is worth a watch, but I don't think it's going to be one that I return to very often, unfortunately. And it was, it's a really simple idea. There's like seven actors total and it's like, it doesn't, you know, necessitate a lot of, a lot of brain power to follow what's going on. But you know, it's just, it just was a little bit uh, underwhelming for what I was uh, uh, hoping, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah, same same with me, man. Like I said, burden of expectation. And so this is more mid tier Shyamalan for me. Yeah. It's not it's not like his early really great run, and it's not like when he was meandering and doing you know stuff like Last Airbender and you know whatever else that some so many people hate. It's better than movie. old, but not by much. Yeah, it's kind of neck and neck because I know I I was more forgiving of that movie than you were. I didn't mind it so much, but I really disliked um, a lot. I disliked the performances in that as well. So I think I do like this better just mm -hmm. for the purposes of the uh, performances. But yeah, to to echo your thoughts about the runtime though, I did think that maybe if we could have done like even the the couple, I don't think that they had as much development and the backstory flashback stuff that we see to really solidify the tenderness of their relationship right. with Gwen. And also because things were left relatively um, unexplained with the exception of, oh, and we hooked up on a message board without getting into too much of it. Um, very heavy into the religious leanings, you know, with the whole Four Horses of the Apocalypse. It's it's talked about in the trailers and stuff, so we're not spoiling much. But um, we we've seen it done before, and I think in maybe a little bit more more startling and upsetting of a fashion. A lot of those disaster scenes didn't really hit very hard because they were very brief. We were seeing a lot of them, mm -hmm. uh, seeing a lot of them just on little news blibs and stuff, because they're out in the middle of nowhere, so they're only getting little pieces of what's transpiring until, uh, as you see in the trailers, there's planes falling from the sky, and so it's it's amplifying in the the level of disaster going on outside and around them but it is really a very small film between yeah. cast and between the intimacy uh amongst all of these characters that we get to but once again maybe not developed as much as as i would have liked so. yeah the it's it remains a very intimate story um un unfortunately i think to its detriment because we only get these experiences over the television like you feel a certain disconnection to it all and it doesn't it doesn't like really hit the way that I think he intended it to hit but I mean the the long and short of the story just to kind of get a little bit back on track uh, is that there's this uh, this family that's at, at a cabin on vacation in the woods and it's a it's a gay couple and their daughter and um, they are just doing their thing when four people show up telling them that they need to choose uh, one of the three to sacrifice in order to stop the apocalypse. And mm -hmm. it, the whole movie is a question of, you know, are they for real or are they full of shit? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, are they just crazy? And so it is an interesting setup. It's an interesting premise, but a little bit squandered, I guess. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like some of the choices that were made script-wise um, made it a less interesting movie. I think if there was a bit more uh, tension and drama in between the group itself, I think that probably would have helped as well because everyone was very amicable to the situation and everything. It's just like there's not much drama there when everyone's on board, you know what I mean? So it's just, it, it's, it, 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 so that's the long and short of it. That, you know, what does this yeah. family do when this group of people are, you know, basically. Uh, you could say emotionally torturing them uh, mm -hmm. in order to try and get them to make a terrible, terrible decision. Yeah, yeah, because it is a home invasion film, really, at the end of the day, and then merge that with the whole apocalyptic sort of scenario. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you in the fact that the story was solid in its setup. I, I do think maybe the the simplicity of oh the, the world is ending you know or is it and that whole kind of thing it didn't really run with it and expand upon it too much beyond beyond that you know it's pretty straightforward in a lot of ways and that's without without spoiling that's why i also found how things resolve in the end to be a little predictable because it was kind of what i expected to happen and you know so yeah this uh th this <clears throat> just was a a little bit of a you know hey eh, okay kind of situation so um acting wise though as we mentioned it was strong across the board for all seven oh, yeah. characters it was interesting to see them interact although i feel like we were missing the motivations on most of the characters through the whole way because you don't really get a lot of the motivations of the uh, for people outside of what they literally say, which is mm -hmm. visions, you know, that's which, basically which, their excuse. Yeah, yeah, so, so they all had mutual visions and they met in this message board sort of forum mm -hmm. or whatever. The only character we really get a little bit more background about because there was a, 
connection with the Rupert Grint character right, right. and one of the men who's the who's the father of, of of Wen. And so that was something that I felt like was was a little unnecessary, but it was really there to throw you off without you know without spoiling to right. make you think maybe this isn't legit. Um, I had no idea he was in this movie, and with the fact that he's done Servant the last few years with Shyamalan, who Shyamalan does direct some of the episodes on that, and he developed it and everything. So mm -hmm. it was cool to see him in here. He's it's not as big of a role, you know, but Batista's obviously the leader, mm -hmm. and he's great in this meeker, more mild mannered role. That he's still like some of the dialogue he has to deliver, and just the very matter of factness of it you're just like damn it's an interesting contrast and you see that in the trailers but it's it's nice to see him continue to just expand his skill i think between comedy and drama so yeah i agree i i think he was really he was really engaging really enjoyable to watch um uh, rupert grint did his job well enough although he was a bit all over the place like at first they act like he was directed to be very kind of insane looking and yeah, and, and acting, acting. Well. And then, like, soon after that, he's, like, very calm and not that way. So it was, it was a little all over the place for his particular character. Um, but for the most part, everyone did a... I mean, even, even he did a really good job. It's just his character was a little uneven. Um, <clears throat> but everyone's acting was great. Um, the little girl was a bit of the same thing that happens in M. Night Shyamalan movies, where the kids don't always talk like kids. They uh, they talk uh, well beyond their years, and this this little girl was kind of no different. Yeah, it's supposed but to be like six, I think, or something. So. I think she said she's she's seven, about to turn eight in like a few weeks or something. Oh, okay. like Okay. Yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, it's um, it, it just it, it that was the same thing, you know. Shyamalan tends to do that, so go in expecting her to be very precocious for a seven year old. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, the story is just kind of okay. The filmmaking is is you know what. I swear I think Shyamalan's filmmaking is just either he's just trying stuff and it's not working for me or his filmmaking skills have slipped because I don't like the, the choices he's making. <clears throat> Literally at one point they have a full frame and the character that's talking is in like the bottom right hand corner and I'm like why is this your choice? Why did you put your character at the very bottom right hand corner with nothing else going on in the rest of the frame it's a it's a it's a 80 percent dead frame and it's so uninteresting and it just leaves me to questions as to why why the hell did you make this choice and he does it like a couple of times and i'm like there's no i don't see any story based or theme based or or subtextual base uh reason for for doing that and i just you know some of the filmmaking is neat I particularly like when he's focusing on a deep part of the woods when someone runs in the home and the door shuts and then it has to refocus on the door. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But then he makes all this weird, all these weird decisions, including the whole first conversation where you're introduced to Batista and the little girl. Where she's catching bugs and it's like just super. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's extreme yeah. close ups the entire time. I'm like, dude, give them a little bit of room to breathe. Like, let us establish. The fact that this big dude is so close to this little girl but somehow not coming off is you know a threat and stuff like that like there's story to be told through using different frames than this and it's just like i'm like okay well these are already some interesting choices and then he kept making and i don't mean interesting in a good way in that context <laughs> you're I like mean, oh that was interesting <laughs> yeah um so i don't know i just he made a lot of weird choices filmmaking wise with uh old as well and so now i'm like is this just a thing? Is he just like, hey, what? Let's let's see what this looks like and see how people like it. And it's like, no, that's not the point. Like, uh, give me a reason as to why the character's way down over here in the right corner. I, I hated it. I really, I, 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 the the bad parts of the filmmaking in this movie like distracted me so much more than me enjoying the good parts. I don't know. Well, I think, and also just filming a movie recently yourself right i mean these are yeah. kind of things that probably stuck out even more so yeah. to you as you're as you're going through the post process so i i mean so i guess that stuff didn't stick out to me as much although the aforementioned scene at the very beginning with the extreme close-ups was a bit um i mean the the movement of the camera for the most part inside and uh just the the shot location was cool i'd like the colorfulness of the forest around them and the fact that there's not as much taking place at night it's shifting to the next day and when there's natural light coming in and stuff but um 
I don't know. I, I circle back to the menace of those apocalyptic scenes that we get. CGI not looking amazing. Not looking awful, but just, I mean, from a visual effects standpoint, I, I could have even... This, this was obviously another small budget thing for him, probably, because it's the end of his two-picture deal he had with Universal, which also included old. Mm -hmm. So so I, I would imagine this was significantly less than some of the transformative effects they had to do for that movie in comparison. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I I was just a little underwhelmed, unfortunately. So, yeah. um, then I guess <clears throat> that leaves us with the effects, which, again, if this movie was rated R, it wasn't because of the gore. Because Jesus, there was there was virtually none. Uh, I mean, there there wasn't none, but it was all cut away from. It was all mm -hmm. off camera, like on purpose. It felt like. I mean, obviously it was on purpose, but it just mm -hmm. it didn't. It made things less interesting, and I'm like, why you have an R rating? Why? Like, just give us what you're. Sh you know, it'll make it even more impactful. And I don't know if this is supposed to be like, oh. Whatever you build up in your mind is going to be more powerful than anything I could show you. I don't, ab I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that person, that that freaking mentality. Personally, I just don't. I never have. I've never bought into that. Yeah, because I mean, characters do die in brutal fashions in this, and, and yet still, the fact that we don't actually, it, it it would have given the situation a little more breadth, I think, and and made it seem even scarier than it actually was. But so so yeah, the lack of effects in in that regard didn't work to this. To this flex advantage unfortunately not so. at all not at all um let's see uh, i mean the sound design was fine you know i i the, i didn't really take notice of the music so i guess i can't say that the music really stuck out to me in any way aside from boogie shoes you know which yeah right the two two different bits in the movie but aside from that okay all right yeah. boogie shoes yeah 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 um but yeah, I don't know. It just was kind of... I can't really call it a misfire, right? Um, but it just was underwhelming and not as interesting as I was hoping it would be based on the premise. Yeah, and it does make me curious to check out the book by Paul G. Tremblay that it's based on because I have seen certain headlines and stuff saying where it detoured and those are some of Shyamalan's choices when he was rewriting the script. So... Um, it, it's a book that had been recommended to me by a number of people over the last few years of doing doing book reviews and stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the time will come to check something else out. But I mean, <laughs> there, there there is curiosity based on my religious upbringing, at least, you know, and how they may have gone in a different direction than the source material. So, I mean, that's fair. If, uh, if you yeah. read it, let me know what you think and everything. Oh, but yeah, yeah it just. That's tough. I don't know. All right. Well, I guess it is what it is. That uh, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. Do you? No, no, not so much. I, I, I will also echo the fact that I don't know if it's necessarily just dictating a theatrical sort of visit for no, this one. I think that you could wait till, till it comes to Apple TV Plus or wherever, because I know that's where that's where Servant is. And so I didn't yeah. bother with a Dolby screen. I didn't bother with a big screen. I, I didn't bother with a good sound system. I just went to a straight up theater. I don't feel like I missed out on anything by doing so. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm a little bummed because I just I always go into it with high hopes for Shyamalan. Oh, yeah. And like he was getting some ground back with Split, um, and then Glass went a little off the rails yeah. with the ending. Um, but uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, Jesus, just a little consistency from the guy is what I want. Yeah, the diminishing returns that you're saying, and you know, is is he just trying new things or is he losing touch? I, I genuinely don't know. But he is one of those prolific names where you know, for better or for worse, anytime one of his movies is coming out, it is kind of an event sort sort of situation especially after he was finding his footing with the visit and with split a few years ago but and yeah. of course he's got his own uh his, his own stan Lee, stan lee cameo going on this was a goofy one too oh i, I wasn't so into it it kind of pulled me out of the movie yeah movie. me too i was like wow you're just overtly on camera now not even like trying to be clever about it in the reflection of something you know or whatever i think the village cameo is the most clever he's ever done you know um just with him it's, barely in the reflection of the of the glass or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's in contention for sure. But so anyway, that's gonna yeah. do it for my thoughts on this. Are you tapped out? Yeah, I am as well. All I right. Well, so. 
<laughs> all right so let us know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments down below if you do go and see this try and keep it spoiler free for everyone the way we kept this spoiler free uh, but i would be interested to know y'all's thoughts if you did check it out uh, thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel the way that you do. We've done a lot of work the past few weeks catching up on that. I think we put together something like 20, 25 Patreon reviews. We're down to four, um, although it is the third, so now we're going to have some more added to the list. But we should be caught up very soon, and we appreciate the support from each and every one of you. Until next time, though, I've been Cecil Laird. And gracias, Jaime and Fuego. And remember, stay, stay scared. scared.